Hello, and welcome to the GRACE podcast series. My name is Denise Brock, and I am the Operations Director for the Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education, or GRACE. In this podcast series, we interview patients, advocates, and healthcare professionals to provide the most updated information for our community and to highlight important issues facing those dealing with a cancer diagnosis. We hope you find this information valuable. For questions or comments, please visit us at cancergrace.org. Every tumor starts with a mutation. We've talked a lot on here about driver mutations, single mutations that let us give targeted therapy like pills, EGFR, ALK, and ROS1. But the fact is a lot of tumors accrue a lot of not just driver mutations, but what I would call passenger mutations. My favorite example is when someone has been subjected to UV light their whole life, never any sunscreen. You pick up lots of little mutations, and they kind of snowball into a tumor that has a lot of little passenger tumors. So tumor mutation burden is this idea that a tumor doesn't just have a driver mutation, but has some number of, let's say, passenger mutations. And the more inflamed a tumor is, the more of these tumor mutations that it harbors constitutes a bigger tumor mutation burden. And there's been a lot of interest as we think about using immunotherapy in the clinic that it might be that patients who have more of these passenger mutations or a higher tumor mutational burden, that some of our immunotherapies may actually work better. When you look at all the human cancers and how much tumor mutation burden there is by tumor type, let's say comparing melanoma to lung cancer to leukemia, melanoma has the highest, again, UV light in a lot of patients' cases. In non-small cell lung cancer, and especially squamous cell lung cancer, what we have is a very high tumor mutation burden because often patients have been subjected to tobacco smoke or radon or air pollution. And so there's a lot of variability within non-small cell lung cancer, but as an entity, lung cancers tend to have higher TMB. So some of the folks who design the trials for immunotherapies have actually tried to choose patients based on TMB. First, what we often do is kind of look back. So when we got pembrolizumab, uh, Keytruda, or nivolumab, Opdivo approved, the, the researchers went back to the patient samples and said, okay, in the average patient, these drugs did better than chemotherapy. But did patients who turned out to have high TMB, tumor mutation burden, did they do even better? And it turns out they did. And there's some rationale for that. Again, the more inflamed the tumor, the more likely the immune system's already kind of on guard, even if it doesn't know how to hit the tumor well. So maybe that's the perfect time to give immunotherapy. What we haven't quite seen yet is, is there a treatment that is definitively better with high TMB or low TMB? There's just this kind of correlation and this retrospective stuff. There are some trials that are kind of in the offing that are asking this question, and a lot of folks who get next-generation sequencing get tumor mutation burden as one of the reports out on the report, high, low. It's measured in mutations per megabase of DNA. Um, Some of the most interesting data have been about whether a high TMB might make a double immunotherapy approach more effective. Um, In lung cancer, we usually use immunotherapy as a single agent, again, Keytruda, Opdivo, Tocentric, or we use it with chemotherapy. But in the melanoma world, actually a lot of people get double immunotherapy, Opdivo and Yervoy, which is nivolumab and ipilimumab. One hits PD-L1, one hits CTLA-4. Some of the data in that combination in lung cancer has suggested that patients who have high tumor mutation burden actually have much or have significantly longer time where their tumor is under control compared to chemotherapy and also compared to patients who have lower TMB. And so there's at least some thought that going forward, knowing that TMB may provide different options as to whether you do chemo with immunotherapy or double immunotherapy. So as they say, not ready for prime time, but something that is evolving in the next couple of years we might have more clarity about to use as a biomarker along with pd l one Thank you again for joining us. This podcast was made possible by the generosity of sponsorship from our friends at Lilly, Novartis, Takeda, AstraZeneca, and Exalexis. Please like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Send us feedback, share your story, 
Donate and visit us for more information at cancergrace.org. Thank you for listening.